Savadika. Where the Neanderthals are each negative? This is a question I had gotten for the longest. And of course, the question is very, very flawed because the Neanderthals? The Neanderthals were very diverse and probably more diverse than humans are today. At a time, uh, about I think it was peak time, 30,000 Neanderthals were alive and spread out over maybe a thousand different communities over Europe and West Asia. Now imagine how, think about how many countries are in Europe. How many are there? Okay, let me take Germany for example. That would mean how populated was Germany with Neanderthals at the time. Let's say 150 total, maximum. That means there were five mil villages, right? No, it's a little bit different than that, different from that. First of all, we have 150 times 10. So 1,500 Neanderthals, maybe, over the area. But some were more populated than others. But let's be more generous and say there were maybe 50 villages all over Germany, right? And 50 all over France. And then you have Spain, of course, and you have Croatia. Then. <coughs> They didn't go too far north, like the Scandinavia. But you know, you have still like Poland and uh, Bulgaria, that whole region. It's really like... Very... And that was the peak, you know what I mean? They were very far away from each other, these tribes. They were maybe 30 in one colony and the next colony was maybe like 50 kilometers away, something like that, you know? And it's always strange when people say to me, well, the Neanderthals, who won, humans or the Neanderthals? What do you think? They had an army? I mean, how stupid people are. Like, what do you think? They went on Twitter and they had their own hashtag and said Neanderthals come and suddenly from all over Europe they had nothing else to do than come together and say we are invaded. First of all, they didn't know they were being invaded. Secondly, it wasn't really an invasion as we would think of it because what happened was that they were all peaceful. Um, so let's say a thousand colonies at the peak time. Which is the number thousand most populated city in Europe? Look it up. So for every city in Europe, for the top 1000, there would be a total of 30 Neanderthals. Okay? They had everything, they had them, their food, they had every, they were living, <clears throat> they were living well from what archaeologists have um, concluded. And they were not cannibals because the bone marks were not from Neanderthals, the, the bite marks. They were either from modern humans or animals. So the invasion took place, the, men, the males were killed and the females were taken. And that's how it worked. That's why we have Neanderthal DNA to this day in us, but there is no male Y DNA present. The empty DNA, some of these X chromosomes are derivatives of Neanderthal DNA, of haplogroups from Neanderthals, but haplogroups have been developing steadily. You see, like empty DNA is a subgroup of, uh, empty DNA K is a subgroup of U, U8, I believe. You know, so when you um, make comparisons timeline-wise, 
they did not get extinct. And it wasn't really evolution in terms of, well, I guess it was, in a, but they, they didn't see it coming, you know what I mean? They were overpowered, they did not see the possibility that they were just going to be overwhelmed. And you know there's power in numbers. And you need to realize when you 30 Neanderthals, maybe eight of them are men of fighting age. And you have dozens of males, modern human males come in. What do you think they do? Do you think they, they come over for coffee and respect the boundaries that the Neanderthal men? No. They see food, they see females, and they take what's theirs. You see, and uh, there is nothing that, you know, look up how empathy, autism, all of these things were, at, uh, not autism, yeah, but uh, us, I hate this stuff, but so much, what exactly is being attributed to Neanderthals? And then realize that in this day and age, we also have the empathy and we have the roots who just want to take. And one thing actually Roger Ebert once said was that you judge a society by its empathy or something like that. That a society with empathy goes far. And I believe, you know, I never looked at the guy, he died many years ago, but I never looked at him in terms of um, like um, anything really. But now I'm like, yeah, I can see how the guy, maybe he was uh, one of us. And there are many all over the place, by the way. You, you, you realize it often when you go on Twitter and see about these celebrities and you realize who just gets it and who just never will, you know what I mean? The big difference. I mean, there's a reason that, anyways, the back to the Neanderthals, I think that, um, the misunderstanding of the Neanderthals. Uh, yeah, I don't understand why. That was not evolution. You know, they were being surprised and they had probably uh, a much better way of life than most people can imagine. They were doing well, they were having everything, there was not no overpopulation and now we are like descendants of like their descendants but a mix of them and the others the invaders i think that when you think about the blood types well we need to know and the claim that they were RH negative really doesn't hold up. I mean, there were people who promoted that theory, but again, if you have a theory, you can't really expect anyone to believe it without seeing evidence. Like, what's the point? Okay. Where are the studies? Where is the evidence? Where are the types of materials that are needed for me to evaluate independently and say, okay, yeah, they have the, these arch, these arch, the other side individuals were arch negative. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay. You can't expect me to just blindly go for it. You know what I mean? And say, okay, I guess so, you know? It's not going to work. I mean, that's not been working for society ever. And it's, of course, the lazy approach, but it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. People are not going to... Um, we need to be systematic about this. So if you want to call the Neanderthals extinct, I don't know. I don't see it like that at all because we are the Neanderthals, maybe only to a certain percentage, maybe three or 4%. But the further we go back in time, the higher the percentage was around certain 
groups of Europe, the Yamnaya, for example. But see, the Iceman, he had like a 10% Neanderthal DNA. He was blood type O positive, by the way. In Siberia, I believe, he was found. So you need to realize that um, yeah, and the Neanderthal DNA has been going down, but it was, look, at that point, if it was really 10%, that's huge. That's absolutely, that's, that's a huge percentage. You know, 10% of human DNA was Neanderthal. So think about our ancestors that were Rh negative, the ones who first mutated. You know what I mean? The first thriving crop of mutations. What do you think their uh, Neanderthal DNA percentage was? What do you think? Probably very high, right? So if it was maybe even in some cases 20%, you know, because we see the low and then the double up all the time. So what would you call that? Then, then, you, then you can go into the room of almost 25, where you're like, okay, one of my grandparents was Neanderthal. 30,000 years ago is really not that far away, honestly, man. And when you look at like ancient Egypt, the, the pyramids, while they were built, mammoths were still around. So the overlapping is always of great interest to me. I love the overlapping part. I love when I see a Komodo Varan and think, wow, okay, that dude's been around since the dinosaur age or something like that. You know what I mean? I love the over the continuum, even though it shifts, and we are the continuum of the Neanderthals. And wherever Neanderthal DNA is most more frequent, except there are parts of Asia where, Jap I, I need to look at this more, but it would be the Denisovans and the Neanderthals in some of the regions, right? And I'm still not convinced of the Altai Neanderthals. Um, they were homozygotes, plus plus, RH plus plus. But were they a mix between Neanderthals and Denisovans? You know, that's the thing that I want to know about. But according, I've read it, and it's it looks like they were Neanderthals, but they could have. I mean, they could have also been very very mixed. So I shall find out more people. I want to thank you for watching. I would like to get more information. Uh, the Cro-Magnon thing. I don't like the word Cro-Magnon because it's not a race. It's a mix. I don't like it. You see, it doesn't tell me anything uh, uh, genetically. Cro-Magnon is a made up race, if you will. Early modern humans, right? mixed with Homo heidelbergensis and Neanderthals and so on and so on. It's never, it never makes sense to me when you, you see, you need to differentiate between anything man-made and genetic. So if you have a mix of people, you can give that group a new name. But when it comes to science, it's not going to be a new tribe ethnically, right? Genetically. It's going to be a mix of tribes. And we see that done all the time where people put culture. That's why I love DNA analysis because it takes us back to the origins. You know, you can always form a new tribe, but what made this tribe where it is, I love to go back as far in time <clears throat> as possible. And then I may be able to realize where Rh negative blood first came about. And then the Neanderthals are a big clue. How exactly, I'm not really sure. But I encourage all of you to read up on them. Look up the studies, I've posted some of them. See if you can find something new. The latest one I posted about the cis AB thing, the blood type AB presence in Neanderthals. Big surprise, right? So whoever said AB is very new, you know, I proved it already wrong with the 2000 year old ancient Hebrew burial grounds. But now we're talking what, 30,000 years, 40, 50? 
So if A, B was present, what about B? You know, all of these stories you'll hear. And it doesn't, you know, by the way, you know, it doesn't mean that B came from the Himalayas. It could have been that it thrived the best there. You know, because certain, you need to look at evolution all the time. That is evolution. Blood type B is not doing well in Europe because it stays at a low percentage. And it shows in a study from Greece about life expectancy. But in Japan, it seems to be a different story. And the old people, the super centenarians, they seem to have a high B percentage. So some areas are ideal for us, for you, and some are not. And the question is also, well, the, the, the Neanderthal DNA went down due to mixing, but maybe, um, you know, which <clears throat> blood type B, you know, if you look at the ancient Hebrews, high IB, well, people mixed, people, I, I, I'm pretty sure blood type B, I mean, there is an advantage with B being for mountain people in mountain regions there must be something about that and the original b people were not b negative they were definitely b positive and it was probably after they migrated west that the first b negatives came about west as in who knows doesn't have to be europe but mesopotamia sumerian that kind of region Pro magnets are RH negative. I don't know. Doesn't seem like it. Where where does it come from? From the early modern humans or the ones that they mixed with? What kind of statement is that? The Cro magnets were RH negative. No. Where does that statement come from? That claim. Why do I keep reading stupid claims? I wish some people, some young people, would speak up and do some, help me with some research, because many of you don't want to be associated with anything to do with RH negatives. So uh, it's very, very horrible to think about. But I'm giving you basically what we need more information on. We need reality and can't be afraid of reality, at least not so afraid that we practice an escapism and follow some kind of nonsense. You know what I mean? That's easy. What's not easy to do is actually to research, look things up, make up our own minds, and then find out things that have never been found out before because now is the time. Now we can do it. Now we can connect with each other. Now we have access to more research than ever before and the possibility for more research than ever before.